Okay, it's time to get started back on the fence project. And the before I could go any further on the, with the rocks on the outside, I needed to do something about my fence gate. And uh, when it was first built, it was uh, not really spaced well. The latch that was on that gate barely made contact. So I have to rebuild the gate itself and then we're going to make it look like a wood gate made out of concrete. So I've taken it off and I've taken it in the garage and I've dismantled it and I put up this wooden kitty gate to keep the dogs in the yard and uh, keep other kids from wandering in. But I'm going to be putting a heavy duty lock on that gate uh, to keep younger kitties out of here. The gate that I'm reworking is uh, identical to this gate and uh, you can see from this lock and latch that the posts were not placed close enough together to make that latch real positively and to install the lock that I want to put on here I've got to uh, have that closer together. So what I'm doing is I'm actually turning the fence sideways, the gate sideways, and then shortening the what were originally the posts that are lengthwise, shortening those to fit widthwise the way I want it to fit. Because in the back I'm also going to be raising it and uh, bringing. A little wall up about a foot and I'll put in a step and I'll put some drainage pipes through here but uh, there will be a wall right along the bottom part of that gate opening with a step on the outside and the reason for that is part of the reason I'm building this fence in the first place is to keep uh, runoff water from the schoolyard out of my yard because the changes that they made out here had started to create a real water problem in the yard. And uh, though they've now regraded the drainage area out here and put in a retention pond, I still don't trust people in the future to not screw it up and have the water running across again like it used to and uh, creating a problem for us. So I'm going to build a partial wall there so that the water will have to come up higher than a foot deep out there before it can run into my yard. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, rework that fence gate and you're going to see that. Okay so here's the gate been dismantled. It took the chain link material off, took the stretch bars out, took the hinges off, took the lock off and I cut what used to be the sidebars, the side uh, pipes, I cut uh, a foot off of those, 12 inches, and now I'm putting those, the thing back together, and then I'm going to probably use these these crossbars. Uh, tie the corners together. And then I'll fill the field with a piece of expanded metal lath and uh, then I'll put the, I'll mount the hinges. I got a new door lock to, or a gate lock to put on it. I'll mount the gate lock and then I'll, uh, I bought an extra hinge. So I have three hinges instead of two to, to take the weight of the concrete that I put on here and uh, then I'll mount it back on the fence and then we'll use that metal lath as the base for concrete to make it look like a wooden gate. So that's the plan. Okay, here's the gate mounted. Put an extra hinge on it. I also uh, <clears throat> installed a 
heavy duty lock that's uh, going to help keep out little kids and something we can lock very positively when we go on vacation. Uh, they said prior I needed to bring this gate up a little bit, put a wall on it, so I have fastened a piece of rebar up about 11 inches. And when I finish with concrete on it, it's just got a scratch coat right now. Um, it'll have uh, be up about a foot, and then I'll put a step on the outside and. <clears throat> fill in this portion up to the top of that added concrete. There will be a, a pipe I'll put underneath to make sure that water can flow through uh, if water gets into the yard. But uh, this will keep water from the schoolyard from coming in here. And uh, we're going to make this gate look like a wooden gate and the posts on either side instead of being uh, made to look like rock will make them look like uh, old wood and because the gate is open I need to keep the dogs in the yard so I got a little kitty gate over there that I'll put in front of it until I get some uh, at least some expanded metal lath on the gate which I'm going to do now okay my vision for this fence <coughs> is to take uh, the top, bottom, and side rails and make them look like pieces of flat lumber, like a frame. That way I can square this back up, make it square, compensate for these posts being slightly out of plumb, and then add a piece of <coughs> wire mesh up curved like this and then vertical planks this way that uh, look rather weathered and then maybe a, just a, a cross piece here frame on the inside and then <coughs> This will be extended. These will be made to look like old timbers. Then I can get back to finishing up the rest of the fence. This will be rock down about seven inches and then a seven inch step. This expanded metal lath is attached in the same way that the, I attached it to the fence. It just with wire ties. And we'll cover it with a thin coat of concrete. I did add an extra hinge. So there are now three hinges on the fence. So I'm not going to try to cover this stuff all at once. Uh, especially things like this up here on the top. This is just a, a piece of expanded metal that's hanging up there. It's wired in down here, but it's hanging free up here. There's nothing really supporting it. So you can see how wiggly it is. But put a little bit on here. When this hardens, that'll be very rigid. Then I can finish it, and then it'll be so rigid it won't move at all. The other places, you know, this tends to bounce when you're trying to put stuff on it because there's not really much in the center. So wherever I joined two pieces, like right here, I joined a piece to make this top up here. Uh, and I put some mortar in that joint so that when that hardens, it becomes like a brace. And this will stiffen everything. And then... Uh, tomorrow or depends on uh, how fast this hardened. It's setting up really quick. Uh, it's 85 degrees. 
uh, I can finish filling in the field and then that'll be rigid. Now we're going to make some boards on here. We've already started. This has another coat to go on to make it look like wood. But it's important we save as much weight as we can. I don't want this to be solid concrete simply because we put a lot of stress on the hinges that I have. So we're adding pieces of styrofoam, like so. And uh, what we'll do with this is just use the foam to help take up some of that, uh, that weight. First thing we do is take some acrylic Keep the acrylic in here. Bonding agent. And add some moisture to the old concrete so that it suck out moisture from one of the boxes put on. We're also going to coat the styrofoam that we're going to use with some acrylic. I'll spill some, so put the bucket down to catch any hands. Butter the back of this with some. Let's see when I go to pick this up, it'll probably break anyway. But don't be too worried about it. I want to work on this side. He's missing down there. I got to put on. That's how we'll proceed. Hey, this is the gate and entryway I've made out of concrete. Make it look like wood. The uh, walkway comes in from the gate from the outside. Fence posts, instead of being like rock, are made to look like wood as is the gate. They'll be stained yet. There's the post. And the texture technique is the same as that that I used on the you see in the video on the two concrete benches that I made. And here's the view outside the kids will see as they come over and we've got to finish the ends here yet with rock but, uh, it's all made to look like wood 
Yeah, if I had to do again, I'd probably use a lighter weight mix on the on the gate. The gate's quite heavy and concerned me, so to keep it from sagging, I used an old-fashioned method of putting an eye bolt here using some cable. Still got to get another cable tie and turnbuckle to an eye bolt at the top. It's actually run through a hole in the in the post that I added here. Here's our finished gate with uh, the two full wood posts on either side. And this is the full wood post. Had a fella stop here the other day and asked me if I got these posts out of an old barn. He didn't believe it when I told him they were made out of concrete. to do now is prepare the top, finish off the top, and uh, for two reasons. I want to give it a nice finished look, and two, I'm going to put lattice panels along here. I want this to be nice and flat, and I want this to be, uh, not only flat, but, but level, so that uh, when we put the lattice panels in, the bottom doesn't show gaps all over the place. So uh, we need to cover from the inside. Let me show you that. On a chain link fence, there are posts and then there are these top rails. And the top rail is connected to the posts and then the fabric is placed on one side of the top rail. And so the other side I've already covered with stone. And this side is where the where the uh, top rail is. And what we want to do here is uh, bring this out, square it off, slightly square it off, so that we can then end up with a nice flat surface here. The only thing what we've got to do to do that is first of all to create a uh, kind of a base uh, attach a heavy mix so that we can then uh, do a finished coat, get it all flat and level. And I would suggest that we're going to at least have a rubber glove for the left hand because you're going to use your hands a lot. Alright, the mix I have here is two sand to one cement with uh, some metacalin, silica fume, and uh, fiber, glass fiber and then the acrylic in the liquid. First thing we need to do is make sure that the old concrete will wet it down real good and then suck all the moisture out of the stuff we're putting on here. Okay. Now what we're gonna do
So what we need to do now is to finish this top uh, before we complete the, the whole cap. Finish the top with a nice, smooth, level surface. And uh, I contemplated a number of ways of doing that. But uh, let me show you what this looks like right now. And then I'll show you how I'm going to go about leveling this. And I'll show you the finished result. As you can see, the top of this thing just being put in roughly by hand is relatively flat, but got a lot of unevenness in it. in it. And what we need to do is to make that as smooth and even as we can possibly get it. Started by using a level, find the high spot on this. And then I've got a piece of mold, molding that's uh, when you look down along it. It's nice and straight. There's no no curve in it at all. And what we're going to do, the high spot is here. We're going to put this on here. We're going to clamp it. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll level this thing, clamp it in place, and then use this top edge as a guide to uh, putting a, 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 a layer of uh, concrete on here to level this out on a nice level surface. Hey, hey, a little bit, making a nice level top now. No, got to go to volleyball tonight though. Hi high school volleyball game. Yeah. Well, I gotta go support my granddaughter too. up some cement and what I'm going to mix up is going to be a three to one sand cement mix with uh, Medicala, silica fume, a little bit of Zypex uh, and uh, acrylic in the mix and some PVA fiber to give it strength. I'm going to wet this down. This is a very thick mix. relatively level. To finish it, you can just wet your trowel. It tends to be sticky with it. So it's a few minutes.
Okay, as soon as that sets up, it should be half hour to 45 minutes, it'll be hard as a rock. We can take the clamps off, move that uh, wood strip down, and finish off the piece that's still to be leveled. That's nice and level. And we've started the staining process on the fence. Some of the rocks colors didn't come out the way I wanted them to, so I just did a new coat of concrete over. Make it like a cement paint. And then uh, paint over. Let it sit for a couple days and it can be stained again. And once I get them stained, then I'll use a cake icing bag and an icing tip to squeeze mortar in between each rock to make it look like a mortared rock wall. And of course once I'm done with the outside, I still have to do rock on the inside. But I am going to get this finished to the point that I can get a couple of panels with the uh, uh, lattice in it and kind of get an idea what the finish look will look like. After staining the rocks, I want to put a mortar joint between each of those rocks. And the uh, best way to do it is with a cake decorating bag and uh, tip. Uh, this brings back a lot of memories. I haven't heard the name Wilton for a long time. Cake decorating place in Chicago. Uh, I grew up in a relatively poor family. We had five kids in the family. My father worked two jobs for a while, the Illinois Central Railroad and with American Airlines loading airplanes. And uh, my mother, to supplement the household income, had a little cake baking and decorating business where she made wedding cakes and all kinds of other, you know, sheet cakes, that kind of thing. So she used to decorate cakes all the time, and, and as a kid, I used to help her out. I'd make the, the roses to a little nail, put a piece of wax paper on it, icing and just to turn the nail and make the petals of the flower this way. And uh, so this brings back a lot of childhood memories. Uh, my wife kindly donated this to me. She doesn't do any cake decorating anymore. Uh, she learned to how to do that stuff for my mother. And, uh, this has been away for a long time, but this works real well. It's got a little round tip. Wilton number 12 tip. A little hole in it, just right for squeezing mortar in between the rocks. And then you brush it and make mortar joints. So we're going to do that. Well, that hole isn't all that big. It's only about a quarter of an inch across, maybe three eighths, a quarter, I guess. Uh, problem is if you have any lumps in your mix, your cement mix, your mortar mix that you put in here, it plugs that hole up all the time. So we got to sift out our Portland cement before we make our, our uh, mix. And for that, my wife also donated a number of pieces of kitchenware that we used to use. And we'll start out with this colander as a uh, hole slightly smaller than the ones in the tip at least get the big chunks out. And then we can use a, a sift, a sieve, to sift out, make it even finer if we want. And uh, we also, this is, she doesn't use this stuff anymore, so she, gosh darn. Yellow jackets all over the place. Also gave me this kind of colander. She says I can put my cement in here. Do this. This is usually used to puree berries and the like, fruit. 
but uh, should work all right for really uh, grinding down the chunks in the, in the cement. She doesn't use it anymore, so I got all this stuff from her. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sift out some of this Portland into uh, a nice fine powder without any chunks in it that could potentially plug up my bag. So I get to work on that right now. Okay. And in a three cups of sifted Portland. One tablespoon of Zypex. I started this a little bit ago and the sun got up beating on it so I had to quit so this came back in shade and right, now we're going to take our bag and uh, I'll roll this bag partially about halfway down
Bugs are biting. So there you go, mortar joints and when they dry that's what we'll end up with. And here's the fence at this stage with the rocks stained, sealed, the top edge done, the logo painted, and uh, everything ready to go for the lattice to be installed. It gives you some idea what it looks like. It's called Redwood. Vinyl. And uh, I decided to put 16 inch segments on. 16 inches high on top of the fence. The reason for that is there's varies between 22 and 23 inches or so. If we take a four foot wide section, divide it into three equal pieces at 16 each. So we're going to cut this into 16 inch wide strips. <coughs> Suggest strongly you use something like this jigsaw. First time I went to use a small circular saw, and it's much too fast, and it hits and snaps pieces off, so not a real good one to use. Use a jigsaw. So the first thing I need to do is mark this off into 16 inch segments. It's going to work out exactly 16 because the actual piece is. Uh, just a little wider, it's about four, 48 and a quarter. So uh, mark it in 16s and then cut to the outside of the line. Mm -hmm. Mark a line, the length of the whole thing. Uh, what I'll do is just clamp a straight edge. Take a marker. Mark the straight edge. Now we need to make a couple cuts. We cut from that end down to this side. So I look for my offset. It's like an inch and three eighths. So I'm going to put a where the cut line is. I'm going to put that on the outside edge of the board that's supporting the lattice. I'm going to set this back. Three eighths. Hold it. Make sure that we 
go. Big space between the lattice crosses. gives us the edge to run our jigsaw against. Straight edge screwed down gives us something to put the side of the saw against. To make the panels for the between the posts and the fence, we've got a couple of things that we have to deal with. One is the extreme flexibility of this stuff. It's going to stand up by itself real good. It's nice if it would, but it won't. So they make these caps. edges and it does a little bit to stiffen these things but there's two things we have to deal with here one is the fact that these aren't long enough nor are these because the space between the posts is about 110 to 111 inches and these are only 96 inches long. So we're going to have to cut pieces to add on to each end, kind of balance it, and put these on. So the other thing is, I'm going to want this, I've decided the way I'm going to install it is to make it float about two inches off of the surface of the top of the, the fence. So I'll need something to make it very, very rigid. Well, they do make wooden, treated wood pieces that go on. They're very stiff and they have a, a groove in them so that this cap will fit into the groove and you put one on the top and one on the bottom and that makes it very, very rigid. The problem is, and those come pre-made as well. The problem with that is those also come in eight foot lengths. I can't get them any bigger than eight foot. I need them a little longer than that, so I'm going to end up making my own. And I'll end up using some of this old treated lumber that came from my kid's playhouse when uh, they were younger. And we'll rip this on my table saw 
to uh, say inch and a half widths and then we'll cut a groove in them that's just slightly wider than the width of these caps. I don't even know what the width of these caps is. It looks like they're maybe three eighths. Yeah, they're three eighths. No, I'm sorry, five eighths. Bigger than half inch, five eighths. Five eighths wide. So we'll have to, to cut a groove, we'll cut, rip these boards, and then on one side we'll put a slightly bigger than then 5 eighths groove in them, and uh, then they can be cut to length because these are 12 footers. And, uh, we can make our top and bottom pieces to give this the rigidity it needs both vertically and horizontally. And then the wood pieces will fit in the slots that I made on, the, on the, uh, each of the posts on the fence. Here's the material that I'm using for doing the uh, lattice work. These are the uh, edge caps the lattice fits into top and bottom. Gives it some rigidity. And then uh, I'm fitting wood over the top of that like this. And then the lattice down here. And then because I need greater than 8 foot lengths that uh, this lattice comes in, I need some divider material. And uh, one piece of lattice goes here, the next piece goes here, and I can make it as long or as short as I need. Uh, what I decided to do for my top and bottom was to use some very old uh, deck boards that I had. It's 5 quarter material and I ripped it on my saw to two inch width and then used a dado blade to just run a run a groove and uh, just a, a sixteenth wider than these caps so that the caps will fit right in that groove and then that will give it the, the support and rigidity that we need to keep the, keep the panels on the fence from flexing now you can do this with a dado blade or if you don't have that kind of a blade uh, you don't want to mess with the saw you can do it with flat material and your cap would go on the top of the flat material and then you can use strips on either side on both sides to do the same thing as a groove cut in the, cut in the wood. So there's more than one way to do this. I just chose to use the dado blade so I could reuse this old wood instead of throwing it away. Then what I'll do is, yeah, it's weathered on the surface. It doesn't really matter. But uh, to make it look uh, presentable where it's been cut, I'm going to stain everything with a, with a redwood stain. I'll go along with the redwood color of the, of the plastic material that's, that makes up the lattice. And we'll go from there. And that basically will finish off our finish off our fence. Okay, we're gonna install the lattice in this space. First thing I needed to do was I want the lattice to be offset from the top of the fence by about what I used was uh, five quarter material so I cut small blocks put into the slot on each end and the bottom rail <laughs> made from that old used lumber I had to uh, individually cut uh, notches to fit and I put a inch or five quarter block on the on the middle of the bottom rail to support it it doesn't flex we can later patch that down I did was put two 
weather resistant screws. That gets that done. Then what we got to do is <laughs> take this edging. And a six inch piece here. And then I measured, cut this, put an additional piece in there. And now we're ready for the rest of this. The lattice, and then the short piece down the other end. Into the edging. Divider for the next piece. Patches to the end. And then we have the top rail. Okay, I ended up dropping a piece and had to go over and get it and stick it back up there. And that's where we are so far. Now all I got to do is go over here because this is a little longer than the 8 foot length that this stuff comes in. So I have to add a piece. That's what that divider piece is for. So now what I have to do is I have to measure how big that piece has to be. I know it's 16 high. It's got to cut a width though. Fifteen and a quarter will be. Fifteen and a quarter. Now I go cut that. same thing with this one as we did with the other one just go cut pieces and then uh, you can see we have uh, those two done down there and when I get that third one done or that fourth one done and uh, get the wood stained I'll take uh, another shot of this and we'll have this whole section of fence done um, the only thing left to do then is next year finish the rest of the fence. We've got four sections in this one and I did the gate in those four sections. Then I have three sections down there to do. Uh, there's actually only two sections that will be done like this one. The, th the third section is going to have to be divided because there's a Commonwealth Edison transformer down there. I'm going to have to do some serious manipulation down there in the end. I'm going to do half a wall and then put in a little gate access for Commonwealth Edison to be able to access the transformer. And uh, then we'll take, we'll just take a final shot of what we've got done and that'll be how we ended up doing our fence. 
I've planted trumpet vine at the base of each post so then what I'll do is I'll if it gets growing I'll train it up the, uh, the post and get it to work onto the lattice and uh, it'll do a good job of attracting hummingbirds I'm standing in a school parking lot and uh, getting a long shot of the finished or near finished fence project the lattice has been put on the top in fact this morning I just finished uh, staining the wood supports there's the lattice work on the top it's uh, vinyl floats free here's my logo I was going to make that look like wood but I got outvoted my wife says I should do it in the school colors of blue and orange so I asked some of the teachers here what they thought and they thought it should be blue and orange too so that's done in blue and orange I may put a light over the top of it but there's basically the fence project and how it turned out thanks for watching